Hello and welcome back to the third year statistics course with QGIS on R. The main topic of this course is structural analysis for Kriegin co Kriegin interpolation. This is just a summary of the sixth lesson of the course, and today we are going to be talking about variogram map, isotropy, and anisotropy. In this lesson, we are going to start with a simple and informal definition of isotropy and anisotropy. But the most important thing to know is when we are talking about isotropy, it means that the value or measurement of a specific variable is the same in all directions. But when we are talking about anisotropy, what happened is that the value or the measurement of a specific variable is different in one direction. If the variable has an isotropic behavior, we can define a circle. And inside this circle, the variable is going to show the same behavior in all directions. But if we have an anisotropic behavior, what we are going to have is an ellipsoid. The easy way to recognize the anisotropy of the data is using the experimental semivariogram in different directions, and also the variogram map. As you are going to see during the lesson, the most common way of classifying the type of anisotropy is the geometric anisotropy and the zonal anisotropy. And in this lesson, we are going to make the definition of both of them. Later, we are going to see the script to create the variogram map, fundamental piece to visualize the anisotropy of the data. After that, we are going to plot the experimental semivariogram in four directions. Remember that we created this script at the lesson fourth of this course. Then we are going to put together the experimental semivariogram in four directions with the variogram map, and we are going to do the interpretation of these two graphs together. In this way, you are going to get a clear understanding about the relation of the experimental semivariogram with the variogram map related to the Muse River dataset. Then, after getting the general idea, of the anisotropy on the data, then we are going to make a deeper study on the main direction of the anisotropy on the Muse River dataset. Then we are going to plot the two most important experimental semivariograms related to the anisotropy of the data. In that way, we are going to get the necessary information that we need in order to plot the ellipsoid related with the anisotropy of the data. Remember that if you want to work with an experimental semivariogram that is created with an, a specific direction, in this case is the direction of maximum anisotropy, you need to have a strong experimental semivariogram. It means that that experimental semivariogram is well estimated in that specific direction. Then you need to have a lot of uh, pair of samples or pair of measurements for each lag distance. A value that is around 100 uh, pair of samples or pair of measurements is considered to be good. But as you are having less and less and less, the estimation of the experimental semivariogram is going to be worse and worse and worse. That's the reason because in most of the cases, if you don't have too much samples or measurements, it is better to work with the omnidirectional experimental semivariogram because it's going to be the one that is the better estimated because you are going to have a lot of pair of samples or measurements to estimate the experimental semivariogram. 
Then, if you want to do a study related with the anisotropy of the data, make sure that the experimental semivariograms are well estimated. In other way, you cannot do the study of the anisotropy. Later, after checking the viability of the experimental semivariograms in the two main different directions, we took the information that we get, the range, and then we plot this information in the variogram map in order to have the ellipsoid related with the maximum anisotropy on the Muse River dataset. As we are going to see during the lesson, the anisotropy in this case is going to be a mix between uh, geometric anisotropy and sonal anisotropy. Then we have to do an extra interpretation on the experimental semivariograms. At the end, we are going to plot the ellipsoid of anisotropy on the map and we are going to make an explanation related to the importance of knowing the anisotropy of your data from the computational point of view. But you have to be aware of the implications of knowing the maximum anisotropy of your data. And I'm going to put a couple of examples. For example, if you are making an investigation related with the concentration of a specific mineral, for example, the anisotropy of your data can be indicating the presence of a paleo channel where the minerals were moving according to the flow direction in the river. Then you are going to have the maximum concentration of the minerals in that paleo channel. Or maybe, for example, if we are doing the investigation of a contaminant, the maximum anisotropy could be indicating the pathway of the movement of the contaminant because of the porosity of the rock, for example, indicating areas with uh, high permeability that allows the contaminant to move in that specific direction. Then at the end, the anisotropy can uh, provide a lot of information but we have to be aware that if we want to make a study related with the anisotropy, the experimental semivariogram has to be well estimated. And in order to be well estimated, you need a lot of uh, pair of samples. If you don't have enough, don't do the anisotropy study. Just work with the omnidirectional experimental semivariogram. Also, I would like to know what is your opinion about the Muse River data set. Why do you think the anisotropy in this case is 30 degrees? I would like to know your opinion. Leave your comment at the comment section below. This course is not available in YouTube. If you want to have full access to the course, just go to the GeoRGV community website at gscourse.online, then go to the tab Courses, and then get enrolled in the third geostatistic course, Structural Analysis for Krigin co -Krigin. Then click on the course, get enrolled, start the course, and here you are going to see all the lessons that we low added already. The summary for today is lesson six, and as you can see, the total content of this lesson is 45 minutes, around 45 minutes, and here you have the scripts to download it. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video and see you on the next one that is going to be related with cross-validation.